Hey, it's Zach. How's it going, everyone? I am back for Out of the Park Baseball 22. I am so excited uh, to play this game. I downloaded it a couple days ago. Have not had a chance to do anything in it, uh, but I'm excited to try to win a championship with the Pittsburgh Pirates. You all may remember me as the guy who uploaded 60-some videos last year uh, in an attempt to win the World Series of the Pirates. The last video I uploaded was uh, we went down 2-0 in the divisional round. Um, we ended up losing. Uh, the last game that I played in last year's Out of the Park Baseball, I got swept in the World Series by the Angels. Uh, didn't even put the video out. It, it just became a lot at the end. Uh, the way I was uploading videos and making them and everything, it was uh, it took a lot of time that I didn't really have. Uh, so it made it difficult. But this year, a couple of housekeeping items. Uh, I am uploading it, I think, a little bit easier. You guys will probably hear the quality of my mic. Same mic. I've just, I'm recording a little bit differently. Uh, you probably hear the difference in quality. You won't have to turn your volume up to 100 to hear me uh, and then get blasted by the next YouTube video that you're listening to. Uh, that's the goal, at least. Um, so hopefully that will make it a little bit more, a little bit easier to upload um, this year as opposed to last year, uh, and we can kind of just pick it up and go from there. You, like I mentioned earlier, my goal is to win the World Series with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, I tried to do that last year. Uh, I'm not going to waste your time. I'm not going to waste my time by doing a. Um, a playthrough that is a quote-unquote rebuild. There are 300,000 of those on YouTube right now, whether it's just for the Pirates or, you know, the Reds or the Cubs. Uh, you pick a terrible team and you you try to acquire all the prospects you can, or you pick a team like the Cubs that is underachieving. You sell off all their big contracts and try to get better that way. I'm not going to spend three seasons accumulating talent. I'm going to try to win the World Series just like I would do if I was Bob Nutting uh, or what Bob Nutting should do. So that means acquiring a lot of uh, two, you know, double A uh, major league ready and triple A major league ready players um, to, to help get us over the hump. Uh, it'll be difficult. I think this year it, it will be more difficult than before. Uh, because last year we could shed some bad contracts. You know, we had Marte, we had Tyon, we had Archer that we could get rid of. This year, we don't have nothing. Ben Charrington <laughs> did that in real life for the Pirates. He got rid of everything. I mean, we have Polanco, Frazier, uh, Moran, maybe to get some type of return in. Probably not anything. But I think this is going to be a very difficult uh, challenge, but I'm up for it. I'm excited to try to do it. Uh, I don't know if anyone has won the World Series is a pot is the Pirates uh, in any out of the park baseballs, at least on YouTube. I'm sure you know, obviously they they have uh, you know, but they may not be on YouTube. So I'm excited to to try to again accomplish this goal. Um, there was something else I was going to say that I'm completely losing my train of thought on. I've messed up this intro like 300 times, so I'm just going to roll with it now. Uh, um, but the only thing, I, I have done one thing this this time around, and I fired some coaches. Uh, but other than that, I've not done anything on this playthrough. Uh, I'll walk through the team with you, see where we're at from a scouting perspective, where our uh, farm system is at, things like that. Uh, but we haven't done anything. And, and I don't know how often I'm going to upload this this time. I, I'm assuming, I think the video's got a little repetitive. Um, I don't... I don't know if you enjoyed all the actual gameplay, so we'll see. We'll try to mix it up a little bit this year. Uh, we'll have, uh, you know, maybe some longer videos. I tried to keep them like 15 or 20 minutes because I don't know how many people can watch an hour-long video of Out of the Park Baseball, but we'll switch it up. There might be some longer videos, might be some shorter ones, uh, might be some heavy gameplay, less gameplay. Um, we'll try to make it exciting, though, and make it manageable, not only for, for me to record, but for you to watch. I mean, th these videos are ultimately for you. The reason I even uploaded in the first place, and, and I think this year will be a lot better, not to go off on a tangent here, I think this year will be better because last year I was not prepared to record uh, any of this. I started recording because in my first simulation, the Pirates won the NL Central, and I was like, I can't believe this happened. Somebody else has to know this exists, and that's when I started recording. Uh, didn't really understand how to do it, just kind of you know, shot from the hip, uh, fly by the seat of my pants, 
uh, and put the videos up. This year, I think I have a little bit better process to it, uh, and I'm excited to spend a little bit more time and different time uh, with you too. So anyways, I'll stop, stop bloviating and actually get into it. Again, pick the Pittsburgh Pirates. They're my hometown team and my all-time favorite team. I would actually cry if the Pirates won the World Series. I'd hope to be in attendance for that game. Um, baseball, again, my favorite sport. Pirates, my favorite team. Uh, and it's going to be hard this year to root for them in real life. So hopefully we can make it uh, a little bit easier uh, by winning something, uh, you know, in a simulation. So you can see here our goals this year. If you look down in the bottom left, uh, not too difficult. Uh, don't suck completely and upgrade at second base. Uh, pretty sure I can do that. You know, feel good about that. The don't suck completely part we can do. Upgrade at second base. Uh, Adam Frazier, I don't think he's that difficult to upgrade from, but we'll see. Uh, so if we look down here to see what our finances are like, uh, yeah, that's Bob Nutting for you. Penny Pincher, um, fan loyalty pathetic. That hurts me to see that. That really does. It is a small market. Fan interest is probably, I would say, even a little bit lower in real life. Uh, but you can see we don't have very much money for ex uh, extensions, don't have very much money for free agents. Um, player payroll 30th, budget 29th. Uh, it's not, it is not good um, at all. So we'll see what we can do with it. But we'll start with the coaches. And that's the thing that I believe is one of the most important things to do right off the bat when you're starting your franchise. So as I go through this, I'll try to give some you know, tips on what I do. Um, I really like that out of the park uh, baseball this year put a, a few more qualities in about development, about personality types. They've redone the trade engine. Uh, they've made the ballparks look better when you're actually playing. So you can see here, I've gone through and I've fired you know a whole host of people at or the major league level and then some in the uh, minor league level too. So one of the first things I did, and hopefully this will help you, I went through and I just clicked on every individual uh uh, coach and I said okay this person is supposed to be a pitching coach so let's click on Drew Bennis um, so let's see how well he does with pitching so handles development decent uh, influences mechanics average um, you know and so I'm going through that and I'm saying okay that should be okay uh, favors prospects um, so I'm just trying to understand is this person qualified for the job that they have uh, and again you have to remember the team that they're, they're on so like Pitching coach for Altoona Curve. You're not going to get anyone who's excellent, 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 excellent or outstanding in any of these. Um, you're going to have to give and take some. So, you know, I look at the things that I've looked at were handles development uh, and then influences mechanics. If you're pitching, obviously, if you are, um, if you're hitting, how do you teach hitting, you know, defense, things like that. Those are the things that I'm looking at because I think they will have the biggest overall impact. So there were a couple play, a couple coaches here that were just poor, 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 poor down the line, um, and that's not me exaggerating. It was it was literally poor, 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 poor. So I have a couple offers out um, uh, right now. So if I go over to, I don't know if I can see the pending offers here. Yeah, so I can see the pending offers. So if you can see, like I have Mike Sosha, who I want to hire as a bench coach. I, I I click in here. Look, heavy view on prospects, which again, not that I'm trying to do the quote unquote rebuild, but it's just very natural when you're at this point, the pirates, you're going to have to deal with that. Um, you know, favors prospects. That's good. Develop, uh, handles development. Good influence. The mechanic is legendary handles aging legendary. Um, you know, teaches hitting decent. So these are all, you know, high level skills that I want throughout the organization. Uh, John Farrell, you know, you can see, I, 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 um, I, what did I offer him? I think it was a pitching coach. Uh, yes, pitching coach for the Pirates. So uh, I offered him, you know, pitching coach, handles development, outstanding. Uh, influential mechanics, outstanding. Teach pitching, legendary. Great. That's who I want to coach uh, or teach our pitchers. So I went through, down through the organization, made some of those adjustments there, and hopefully they accept the job. Again, no clue if they actually have uh, or not, but we'll find out when we sim, you know, the next day. So that's what I've done on the personnel side. Uh, we'll get, I was close to firing Rick Eckstein. Um, but again, good t teaching hitting. Don't really like the handles development fair, very, uh, favorable toward prospects. So we're going to see, we're just going to let him go a little bit and see, um, what, what that's actually like. So that's where we're at from a coaching standpoint. And when I look at the um, player development side, I'm actually going to finish simming today because like, this might bring up data here. Um, 
Okay, yeah, no thanks. Don't worry about it. So we'll just, uh, we'll finish today. See, like I said, this is the first time I've touched it. So I'm relearning the buttons just like y'all. I haven't, I haven't touched this really since I got swept by the Angels in that World Series. It's kind of hurt. Mike Trout wasn't even on that team. So he didn't even get, he, he didn't even get his World Series because it was in like year 20, 28 or something like that. I think he retired or played for like the, the Mets or some weird team like that. So I'm interested to see where they rank the minor league system. Uh, I imagine the Pirates will have a decent one just because uh, Cabrian Hayes is still has his prospect status. But, okay, it looks like we have some um, uh, agrees the contract, agrees the con- Okay, so that's great. So we'll go back and we'll we'll look at those. But first, let's look at where we're at from a, um, a front office perspective. So we're going to go to – we looked at personnel. Okay, so we have a couple more pending offers, bench coach. Looks like everyone else has accepted it. No one's declined their offers yet, so that's great. But player development. So, okay, ninth out of 30th, minor league system rank. Um, Nick Gonzalez, wow, did not expect him to be 27. I don't know if he's that high in real life or not. Uh, Cabrian Hayes, um, yes, uh, sixth overall. That sounds about right. Uh, Quinn uh, Priester, uh, yeah, I'm actually kind of surprised that they're this high up in the rankings ninth. We'll hope to add to that again with, with shedding some bad, well, again, we don't have that many bad contracts. Let's check that out. So, yeah, look, we have Polanco, okay, Frazier, Moran. Uh, other than that, there, <laughs> there is no one tied up whatsoever. Wow, that's unbelievable. Just like Bob Nutting likes. Uh, Polanco is our biggest one that we could get rid of and i pro- and i don't know how much value moran has let's hover over him and see what his skills are i guess moran could be valuable frazier i mean just all very average guys um who again we're gonna try to get the best out of them we're gonna try to to win but we may trade them and you know for players that can contribute next year but again this is not going to be a you know a five season rebuild we're going to try to win right away so um, that's where we're at from a player development standpoint. These guys are far away, too. You look at this, Nick Gonzalez, uh, high A, Quinn Priester, double A, um, double A, double A, triple A, Travis Swaggerty, un- you know, unknown how good he actually is uh, in real life or in the game. So, again, a lot, uh, you know, and this is what this is what Ben Charrington did in the offseason. Off he is taking lottery tickets. Uh, these guys, he's trading for these guys uh, who are young, low A um, uh, players, high A players, and, you know, hopefully he hits on those scratch-offs. And that's that's the strategy here. And I, I can't necessarily hate that. Uh, but one of the things to be excited for, we do have the first uh, pick in the draft this upcoming year, so hopefully we can we can go through that. Um, lineups, let's check out the lineups here. Uh, Anthony Alford, wow. I can't believe this is an actual major league lineup, to be honest. Brian Reynolds, um, hor- horrific season last year. Uh, Brian Hayes, uh, stud. If these prospects have, you know, could reach their potential, this wouldn't be a bad team. I mean, they're not going to make the playoffs, but it wouldn't be a historically bad team. It would be, you know, it would be, you know, it'd be a 65 win team. And I guess that's not saying anything great, but it wouldn't be a 40 win team either. This, this, this is what's brutal here. You look at the, um, look at the rotation. I mean, Mitch Keller just, who has been a complete dud in his career is the number one starter jt brubaker chad cool steven brault tyler anderson i mean yeah yuck um yuck 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 i could see you know like trevor cahill making starts this year one of the things i did is i hired a or gave a um uh offer to a trainer that fatigue outstanding at handling fatigue preventing arm injuries because i mean any injuries whatsoever to the staff or bullpen eh, I, I mean i don't even know how ugly you can get i mean this is this is like an all-time bad rotation uh to me at least in my even in my experience of watching the pirates we've had some pretty terrible teams this may be the worst rotation i've ever seen as a fan um so we definitely have a lot cut out for us here um let's see so we went through 
some of the lineups. We went through the pitching staff here. I mean, I, what else is there to say? Jacob Stallings. Below, I know I didn't go through this in detail, but like Jacob Stallings, below average. Uh, Gregory Polanco. Um, can't throw a ball more than 10 feet. At least I haven't seen him throw a ball more than 10 feet in like three years. Um, Kevin Newman, all contact, hasn't lived up to his hype. Adam Frazier, quality, does everything well, nothing great. Um, Colin Moran, just, I mean, the guy hangs around. I think he's a little, I think he's actually somewhat valuable to the Pirates, um, specifically, maybe not to any other team, but I think he, he has a lot of flexibility and I think he's a little bit underrated for the value he provides. Hayes, uh, rookie of the year candidate here. He's the reason I'm excited. Reynolds, terrible last year. I, I mean, was that, you have to think last year was a fluke because it was just so off, uh, off brand from his, you know, not only his rookie season, but also his minor league seasons uh, before that. He's always been able to make contact with the ball, even back in, I believe he came from San Francisco, even back in San Francisco, he could make contact with the ball. And then last year, just, you know, average just bottomed out. So Anthony Alford, I believe he was with the, okay, I was going to say, uh, I was going to say Royals, but was not the Royals, was th- with Toronto. Um, you can see there, uh, nothing great to be inspired about as well. But again, when you're at this, when you don't have the big bats, you have to rely on defense. And that's really the way you can sneak runs in and, or sneaks, you know, wins in is by saving runs. If you can't score them, you know, a, a run saved is as good as a run earned. Um, so team chemistry, it's, it's content. Meet the team here. Uh, looks like anyone who's really worth a damn, at least the game thinks so, is Cabrian Hayes, which I um, <laughs> happen to agree with. So I think we went through – oh, strategy. The only thing we, we'd, we'd want to switch up here is a strategy to what I would do. Um, stealing bases. So let's do this real quick, and then we'll look at projections, and then we'll kind of get on with our life. Uh, and then I'll stop this, and then in another video we'll actually probably play the first game. Um, stealing bases, uh, and there's a ton of flexibility here. This is one of the things that Out of the Park Baseball also changed this year, where you can not only have more um, options of when you want to have you know these um, different strategies take place, but you can also have individual player strategies, which I think is pretty cool. So like Mitch Keller... If I want to set an individual strategy for Mitch Keller, I can come down here, drag and drop, and say, okay, so when Mitch Keller specifically is pitching, do I want to have a quick hook or a slow hook as a starter? Do I want, as a reliever, a quick hook or a slow hook? I'd put quick for reliever because he's not going to be in that position. Now, pitch around. Do I want him to intentionally walk players? So, I mean, the level of detail, and this is, again, why I love this game so much. The level of detail is just unbelievable. Now, I'm not going to go into that level of detail um, because I don't plan on having a lot of these players around um, too much longer. I'm hopefully going to trade to to get some higher potential, higher skill players and win with them. Uh, as opposed to, again, this is not a full rebuild. We are trying to win. I'm not going to waste your time, and I'm not going to waste my time. Uh, so I'm not going to set those because hopefully we can, you know, we'll have other players we can set those for. But so stealing bases, I am actually a fan. I know that's kind of out of vogue right now in Major League Baseball is stealing. I like it because it puts pressure on the defense. And I'm not going to ramp it up, but I, 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 I wouldn't mind attempting to steal uh, more than once. I'm a big, or not more than once, but multiple times a game. I am, I'm a fan of putting pressure on the defense. So I want them to make the play. I don't want them, you know, I want them to actually have to make a play. Like when you're going from first to third, um, the chances I feel like of them throwing a, sh- the right fielder throwing a strike, you know, and a single hit to right field, you're going from first to third is really slim. So make them make a play. You might get past a third baseman. Uh, it might get cut off. Uh, there's, you know, make them get you out. Don't just concede a base or concede an out. Um, make them earn it. So hit and run. So I'm okay with, you know, being, you know, using hit and run often, um, you know, being aggressive on the base paths. I do not like, um, I'm going to leave bunting just a tad below the average there. Squeeze bunt. 
I'm going to leave that as average. I'm not opposed to that play at all. Again, you're making the defense make a play. Uh, bunt for hit, I am v- I'm very against that. Just swing. I hate when pitchers bunt, you know, particularly when there's nobody. I've seen pitchers try to do that when there's, like, one person on or, like, or, or no one on. They're trying to bunt. It's like, what are you doing? Um, so I'm anti-bunt for hit. Sorry, I just had to take a swig of my water. It'll be McCallum next time. Don't worry. Uh, pitching and defensive strategy, pitch around, um, no, not a fan of. Again, make the other person make a play, make the hitter hit. Intentional walk, nope. Uh, hold runners, uh, yes, I'm in favor of holding runners. Uh, play infield in, um, just to maybe a little bit more than frequently. Play corners in. Again, I I don't want to I don't want to change this so that every you know every play they're playing this weird you know shift formation, but. I do want that these infield shifts frequently. Yes. I want, you know, I know everyone complains about shifts. I don't, I don't, I don't understand why it's a strategy of the game. Um, shift outfield depth. Yeah. Frequently. If a player has a tendency, play that tendency and make the hitter make a play. Again, it comes back to my, it comes back to every, you know, making the, the other team earn things. Um, hook starting pitchers. Um, uh, I, I don't know. Sometimes I'm slow. Sometimes I'm quick. Our bullpen this year is just so bad, so I'll probably be a little bit slow on that. Hook relievers, uh, yes. Um, favor uh, pitching matchups, left-righting pitching matchups, yes. Um, batting matchups, yes. Um, not so much pitching. Pinch hit for pitchers, um, yes. I don't think we're going to have to worry – about too many perfect games getting interrupted by a pinch hitter this year, so we'll put frequently. Pinch hit for position players, high up as well. Uh, pinch Use pinch runners. Yeah, I'll use it a little bit more frequently. So let's see what's down here. Okay, if facing an opener, a base lineup on likely follower, yes, I would agree with that. So look at who's going to probably take over after that opener. Use of openers. Um, I mean, with a team, with, a, with the rotation as bad, is there any... Is there any uh, value in, in using one, I'm not sure. Uh, defensive substitutions, I think they should be in the seventh inning, uh, leading by, mm, I must want to save it if it's four runs or less, to be honest. Um, in the seventh inning, start substituting defensively, and then position player pinch hit starting in, I mean, I feel like we're going to need all the runs we get, so starting in seventh inning. I would say. I think that's early. So, okay, so that's our strategy there. I like that. That's how I feel about, you know, baseball. I'm not going to get into this much detail where, you know, hey, is small, you know, with your trailing small in the seventh and eighth inning, how do you want to play? And that's, again, too much detail. I highly encourage everybody who plays this game, use that detail. It will come in handy for our intents and purposes, at least right now in this season. Uh, I don't think it's going to matter much. So, uh, let's see. So they are also going to run projections, I believe. I want to see if they still have the projections page on here. Uh, it doesn't look like they do, actually. That's a bummer. I wanted to see what they project the old buckos at. Uh, is there anything in, in mail that I can that I can see that could project here? Um, nope, nope, nope. So, all right, we can't do that. So then prospect pipe pipeline yep uh, wander franco have a signed ball from him baby um but anyways that's neither here nor there i would love to see the rookie draft okay we have the first pick of course of course and i want to see okay there's kumar uh i don't know if you all been keeping a, a jordan lawler I was listening to some nerd from Baseball America saying the Pirates should take him uh, with the first pick this year. Uh, I wanted to just, I wanted to throw my radio out the car. I, I mean, if you've watched Jack Leiter for more than 10 seconds this year, you can tell this guy's a stud. This is who I think I'm going to take. Uh, again, I'm going to go through the scouting because simulations are different than um, real life. But can I get a scouting report now? Can I? Okay. Request scouting report. And I'm going to put him. Can I put a, yep, create new short list? We'll say 2021 uh, MLB draft. 
All right, sweet. So I, in the meantime, I will uh, get the scouting ready to go. I will um, go through some other settings uh, in terms of when I get notified. And then we're going to start opening day, boom, just like that against the um, – Chicago Cubs, and I can't wait till we get to that game against Jake Arrieta. I personally do not like him and can't wait to hopefully bash his brains in the simulation. But anyways, thank you for joining me on the first episode of the 2022 Out of the Park Baseball. Thank you. I am excited to play as the Pirates again. Hopefully the, the y'all who watched last year will watch again. Um, we're going to the championship this year. We are going to try to – no, we're not going to try as Yoda said, do or do not, there is no try. We're going to win the championship. Maybe not this year, but in this playthrough, we absolutely will. Uh, thanks for joining, and I will talk to you all soon.